And we're now at a point where I think feasibly asking someone what is number one is a level four, level five question, because there's lots of people, particularly in the quizzing community, who just don't know. Actually, what's been rubbing you up the wrong way in the last uh, month? Um, so I think it's, I mean, I, to be honest, I, I say to other people, I always find quiz league hard. I then find it particularly hard when you ask me questions about canals and old aeroplanes and things that just are not in my radar. Um, and someone else, I don't think it's the term that people use in general, which is old man quiz questions. And that is my my bugbear. But I feel bad because um, just because I don't know it doesn't mean I don't think it should be there. I just kind of think, is it, are we keeping up to date with people's frame of knowledge? So what I found with one of the the old man questions, as I will call them, is there was one about planes and it was like plane prototypes. And someone who got it right, quite rightly said, when he was a child, this was all in the news. People getting very excited about this plane that was then didn't happen. Mm. I don't remember ever in my life. I think Concorde was the last time anyone talked about a plane. Like nobody <laughs> talks about even planes that are running. No one talks about planes that way. Um, and yeah, it just seemed a bit kind of, I don't know how, it's a kind of that thing I keep coming back to. It's like diversity in quizzing and it's keeping those kind of old man quizzers happy. Um, but also acknowledging that is that is not a frame of reference for a lot of people. And is it truly answerable? And is it being acknowledged as a kind of, is it now just seen as a hard question, which if that's the case, fine. But if it's seen as, oh yeah, people know this because quizzes from the last 30 years have known this, then I do question. And I think people are just always very slightly hostile towards them. Uh, and I, I, I said, no, no criticism of those who set the questions. They're good questions. They're well-worded and people are getting them. But let's look at maybe five to 10 years. And if those questions come up, I think there's going to be a lot of X's because they're just that's not general knowledge for a lot of people anymore. I think there's a good um, discussion to be had about do, do some questions have a shelf life? There, there must be some questions where actually they're no longer relevant or particularly interesting or significant in any way. And perhaps they should be gently retired. Paddy, do you have a sense of anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I think the, uh, not, not to sort of use an old man metaphor here, but I think sort of like the course of quiz questions and what comes up is a bit like a, a river or maybe a canal. <laughs> <laughs> no more canals. <laughs> yeah, you know, these things sort of ebb and, you know, sort of they, they come and go and sort of, and, and sort, of, sort of through different periods, yeah, sort of they have different uh, resonances. Mm. There are all sorts of things that you can do online now. There are all sorts of things that suit you better. And... You know, in a, in a, in a quiz like the like QLL, you have to be prepared for anything to come up. And <laughs> the people that set those questions and who put the rounds together are, are very sensible people and they know what they're doing and they sort of know how to balance something in the round. And so, yeah, so if your tide is out on one set of questions, then your tide will be hopefully back in uh, on another set of questions. Uh, but I think it is important that people maybe sort of step back from um, maybe sort of their ego a bit. Because I think a lot of it is, you know, it's, uh, you know, if you're used to getting, you know, six out of eight questions, right, on a certain standard, and then that regime changes or it's widened a bit, and now you're all of a sudden down to four, maybe five at a stretch, you know, small wonder people do kind of cleave a bit more tightly mm -hmm. to the thing that was making them do better. But you also have to think as well is that it's funny how things can change from being completely unknown a bit of a chestnut and no time flat like mm. I've done two quizzes in the last fortnight where Elizabeth Domitia the, the first uh, the first head of government of the Central African Republic who was a female came up so I'd never heard that the first time around and now it's wedged in the back of my head so I think the more quizzes you do the better you get at them and so if you're going to do more quizzes then you should do quizzes with a very wide scope so I think it's it's only to be welcomed um the odd canal question here and there, I think, it can only be good, it can only be good ultimately. Um, but you know, as long as as long as World War Two battles and you know and airplanes that you know flew over Dresden isn't the only thing you're hearing about on your quiz, then I think I think, you're, I think you'll be fine. There is sometimes I think yeah, it is very important to delineate 
uh, what is an objectively good question? What is something that you, you know, would be, it would be good for you, it'd be edifying for you to look up afterwards? And what is, I didn't get it, ergo, it's bad. And I'm all, by the way, I'm also conscious of the fact that, you know, in 2040 or 2050 or whatever it is, and, you know, please God, I'm still buzzing and everything, that there'll be, you know, questions about mean girls will be old man fodder, you know? <laughs> or it's like, you know, it's, it's sort of like, you know, Michael Schumacher and all this sort of stuff, like, and it'll be all the oh, this, this boring old Formula One stuff, you know, or that kind of thing. So you always have to wonder about, like, you know, the stuff that you're interested in now that you're not hearing enough of, uh, you know, its time might come as well. And when that time comes, you, you need to be understanding as well that there will be other issues that will be, you know, ushering your stuff out the door uh, at a rate of knots as well. So, I th- yeah, I think you need to have these sort of things, yeah, sort of in a, in a, in a nice even keel, you know, and then realise that this too shall pass. Well, indeed, having been described as one of the old guard in the past week, I know that my time is clearly rapidly approaching. I don't know. At that, oh, I mean, it's not so long ago that I started quizzing, and I was one of the youngsters because I was in my thirties, and and now I'm in. And now I'm the old guard. At, I don't know. I don't see myself as that, but I do look at the younger quizzes and think, dear God, it's really quite appalling how talented you guys are (laughs) and how hard you work at such a young age and how much you know and yeah it's almost kind of unfair can we have some sort of handicap system so that the old guard like me can still compete with (laughs) with the thrusting young bucks uh... the handicaps the plain questions that's what gets you (laughs) (laughs) that's that's yours but yeah i was talking to someone again similar to me like in their 30s youngish and we were talking about how there was questions about rappers but they said oh it's about rappers only on soundcloud and we were like that's not a thing like that's not even why are you asking this and there are that's obviously a thing and that's obviously a thing that people of a certain age that's how they're getting their music Mm. and they know about those sorts of things um so it's already you're already seeing kind of generational divides between those in their 20s and 30s now Mm. it's yeah. yeah And it's only going to get worse. Like when you think of it, you know, the idea of like being in your mid thirties and on TikTok or Snapchat or something is sort of kind of mind blowing a bit. So, you know, I think this internet age has been really sort of good in terms of obviously opening up all sorts of different options for us all to quiz, but also it has really accelerated the culture a lot. Mm. Um, and so like as somebody that, you know, at one point used to, you know, be very interested in the charts and basically new music and everything. I find it now it is incredibly difficult to keep up and like you really do need to be like on it all the time and it will get to a point I think where yeah if you've if you've taken your eye off the ball for even a year or two on lots of topics then you know you'll get you'll get passed by by people for whom it's like a fluent language. Well I was watching I'm a Celebrity and Harvey or Harvey no actually no it's not so I was watching Strictly. (laughs) They're all the same. (laughs) I was watching a reality TV show uh, that appears probably on a Saturday night. Um, yeah, so on Strictly, I was watching Harvey or Harvey or however you pronounce it. And I was thinking, how have I never heard of this pop star? You know, how is it so massive? And then I looked on, he hasn't really troubled the charts. And yet he's huge. And that, again, you know, somebody who used to learn everything they needed to know about pop from Top of the Pops. Um and the chart rundown to now have people who are mega stars selling out arenas and they don't actually have number ones and things that is just a, a, yeah a sign of the times and for quizzes particularly the old guard or old man quizzes trying to keep hold of somebody who who is popular without being um quantifiably successful and that yeah. that's that's really problematic yeah i mean how um, do you even find that on the list like that's yeah. the thing like the charts are still a list that you can study mm. and if someone is not on the charts you're well within your rights to go well I'm, I've learned what's in the charts that's the music questions that are going to come up and we're now at a point where I think feasibly asking someone what is number one is a level four level five question because there's <laughs> lots of people particularly in the quizzing community who just don't know but yeah there's all these things like YouTube celebrities like mm. I watch something called ASMR and I could feasibly 
write a question about this and say, well, actually, it's kind of mainstream. People are getting like millions of views on these videos. Mm. So it is in the general public. But actually, there's a lot of people who are going, I don't go on YouTube to watch weird whispering videos. Like, that's just <laughs> not on my radar. And then, again, that is fair. But in, in communities, you've now got these kind of, yeah, what you want to say internet celebrities. But I think it kind of goes beyond that, really, because everything is on the internet. So that's where you're going to find your new and also your kind of old, you know, interests. Yeah, but there's, there's loads of shite on the internet, isn't there, right now? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video on all things quiz if you like this video and want to see more like it then please click subscribe to your left you can see some suggestions of videos you might like and if you want to discuss anything you've seen on all things quiz or perhaps volunteer to get involved in one of our challenges then why not join the all things quiz facebook group